If you have not caught September's mid-month budgeting update, go and check that video out first before you come to this because this is the finalized amount and a little bit or rather a lot of things have changed as compared to what we budgeted for previously and I'll share with you a little bit more why as well. In the Money Diary series, I share with you guys my income, variable expenses, fixed expenses and also the money mindsets and the values that I have when it comes to managing my own personal finances. Hopefully you can pluck some ideas out from here, apply it to your own personal finance life and manage money better so that your future self will look back and thank you for it. Let's dive straight into today's video. It is September's Money Diaries. Let's go. Income total is at $14,076.98 for September, of which I'll break it down for you later on. Let's go into expenses first off because I think it's more meaningful knowing how to manage your expenses as compared to whatever that you bring in monthly. More or less, it stays consistent. A quick pause before we go back to today's video. One of the ways that I always try to increase my income every single month is to stash away my idle cash into places that earns me higher interest. And one of the platform offering you great interest interest right now is none other than Momo Singapore where they are giving you 5.8% per annum guaranteed returns for the first 30 days when you place your idle cash into either the SGD Fullerton Cash Fund or the USD Money Market Fund. The entire sign up rewards that they are offering right now is for an amount up to SGD $750 and here is how it works. 5.8% per annum returns for the first 30 days. You place a maximum deposit of $80,000 into either the SGD Fullerton Cash Fund or the USD Money Market Fund where you can earn daily interest and in total you could be receiving up to SGD $380. In addition to all of this, when you use the sign up link down in the description box below, deposit your first $100, make one buy trade, and this buy trade includes subscribing to either of the funds, either the SGD Fullerton Cash Fund or the USD Money Market Fund, and you receive $2 daily for the next 10 days, that is total of $20. Thereafter, deposit cumulatively reach an amount of $3,000 SGD, make three buy trades, and it also includes subscribing to either of the funds, and you'll be receiving three Tesla fractional shares, each worth USD $20, so that in total is USD $60. If you have more that you want to keep into the SGD Fulton Cash Fund or the USD Money Market Fund, the last tier is you deposit a cumulative amount of SGD $10,000, make 10 buy trades, you can just continuously subscribing into the fund, and you receive 10 Tesla fractional shares, each worth USD $20, that makes up to a total of USD $200 in that tier. And in total, all the sign up rewards, including the 5.8% per annum interest and all the fractional shares, it makes up to $750 SGD. So if you want to sign up, use the sign up link down in the description box below. This is a limited time promotion only. Take advantage of this 5.8% per annum interest for the first 30 days promotion that is ongoing until the end of October. Whether they'll extend it or not, I'm not sure. But if you're watching beyond October, updated details will be down in the description box below. Make sure you use the link down in the description box below and sign up before this promotion ends. Let's get back into today's video. Let's go. Let's go into expenses first. For fixed expenses this month, I've included whatever that I need to spend for moving to South Korea. Relocation expenses, things like flight tickets, rental payments. In total for September is $1,114.32. The breakdown of this is a one-way flight ticket from Singapore to Jeju. Cost me $237.20. For rental is a total of $807.45. This is definitely way cheaper as compared to renting in Singapore. So had I put myself in Singapore, not relocate, to South Korea, my monthly rental payment would probably be close to $2,000 just for a one bedroom place and probably shared with many other people as well. So for those of you who are renting, let me know roughly how's the rent like in Singapore for one. Insurance coverage is $43.49. This is a single trip insurance because annual trip travel insurance, each trip can only be up to 90 days. My entire trip this time round wouldn't fit the annual trip insurance and that is why I bought a single trip insurance and recognized only for the month of September. So every single month, Subsequently, my Money Diary series, insurance coverage will be one of the fixed expenses. SIM card is $26.17. Korea SIM card, I bought it through Shopee. Link will be down in the description box below. If you're traveling to any other countries, you can go to Shopee and find eSIMs or SIM card delivered to you before you leave Singapore. Pretty affordable as well. In total, relocating to Jeju in South Korea was $1,114.32. Rental definitely will go up when I move to 
so and also when I take a break in Japan for two weeks that will be quite expensive I'll share with you guys in the subsequent plan other fixed expenses for the month of September has more or less stayed the same as compared to my other months of money diaries where my insurance premiums amounted to about $450 monthly life insurance and also my endowment plan and there is my phone bill which I'm using giga sim only plan that cost me $10.10 this is a 10 gig plan that gives you 300 sms's 300 minutes of talk time and the data rolls over every month so any unfinished data in my previous month will roll over and I'll have more data so I'm maintaining my Singapore line because it doesn't make sense for me to cancel my Singapore number when I still have a lot of accounts that's attached to that number $10.10 if you want a referral link it'll be down in the description box below for Spotify it's at $11.09 Spotify premium has gone up quite a bit a dollar so roughly about 10%. Previously, it was only $10. For those of you who are Spotify holders, expect that the premium has actually gone up. For iCloud, it's $4.02. And taxes, $20.45. For those of you who are wondering why is my taxes so low, in 2022, I earned nothing from YouTube. And my day job only paid me under $3,000 back then. I didn't earn a lot, contrary to what you guys think. Only until recently, when YouTube started picking up, had I started receiving much more income coming from the side hustle. If you're curious about how much I'm earning, go and check back Money Diary series from 2.0. To two, I'll put the links up above, playlist link down in the description box below as well. $20.45 is my taxes and I gave $1,000 to my mom for the month of September. Netflix is $12.98 and overseas expenses relocating as I mentioned, $1,000 over dollars. So my total expenses, fixed expenses for the month of September is $2,626.39. Subsequently, in the months coming ahead, it's going to maintain in the $1,000 over dollars range because of rental payment and whatever expenses for my insurance premiums that I still have to keep on paying paying for as well. Now, let's go into my variable expenses, of which is going to get exciting because you will see a lot of things that I've spent on here on Jeju Island and a little bit of a change as compared to what we budgeted during the mid-month budgeting update in September. Let's go to the variable expenses portion. Okay, variable expenses. I'll be referring to my phone for some photos of which I can share with you what I've spent on. I did take some photos just for memories, keep sick. My meals out this month was a total of $176.56. Most of what I've spent on, if you see my filter over here for meals out, it's at cafes and places where I settle down to do my work at. Things like coffee, sometimes cakes, snacks. And when I do go out and have my meals at specialty restaurants, it can go up to $20 SGD. Food is not exactly very cheap here on Jeju Island when you dine out. Same goes for when you are in Singapore as well. If you go cafe hopping, when you go and dine out at restaurants, it'll cost roughly about $20. But if you go to a Korean restaurant, per dish, it'll cost about $8 to $10. $8,000 to $10,000 Korean won, so it's not very expensive. Previously, when I first came, I went to a Korean diner and they served a lot of side dishes and that meal alone was only 11,000 Korean won. Kept me full the entire day, I didn't have to eat dinner and I regretted eating breakfast. Their portion is huge. Price you pay is relatively reasonable for that amount of food, 11,000 Korean won. But if you see the filter over here in my budgeting expenses tracker spreadsheet, bulk of it is mainly drinks and also snacks at cafes where I situate myself and do work there, do some research, scripting, writing and also editing. Why I don't do it at a place that I'm living, I want to separate myself so that there's no temptation to just lace around on a bed, on the floor, <laughs> watch TV, etc. So that's why I situate myself at cafes. But their coffees are pretty affordable. So sometimes I go to Mega Coffee or Pipe Coffee. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Per coffee is about $2, $3, $4. Relatively reasonable as compared to Singapore. When it comes to groceries, I've bought a lot of groceries when I first came. My temptation is that when I enter into a grocery store, I love being around in a grocery store and sometimes I can't help myself. Expensive things here is fruits. So I'm a fruits lover and I really love eating fruits. I've bought a box of peach for 20 over dollars, high 20-ish for about 7 to 8 pieces. I shared that with my neighbour as well. There's quite a lot of things that is still left in the fridge of which I know that I don't need to spend for groceries in the month of October anymore apart from maybe buying vegetables and also fruits. I need to clear all of that before I move out in November. Groceries this month is $288.71. I wasn't as prepared because I didn't think that I needed to spend that much on groceries, but I overbought. If I were to just buy what I had to consume in the month of September, this would be half half of that or one third of that amount. For bus and MRT rides, it's $51.02. My Namane card, the card that I'm using for my public transportation, still have 20000 over Korean won. I only spent 30 over dollars for my public transportations in the month of September. Cab and car, I did rent a car this month on one of the days, even though I wasn't expecting it. I had a friend who visited and was at the south side of the island, so I rented a car for one day to drive over to the south side. If I were to take a bus, it's going to be four hours plus, not even adding in the waiting time, so I decided to just 
just rent the car, it costs 27,000 ish Korean won, which is roughly about $30 SGD for one entire day, 24 hours. And if you add in petrol, the entire amount I spent was $55.42 for a one day car rental. So if you want to rent a car for one day only, it'll cost you roughly about this amount. It's not very expensive in my own opinion. If you get Go in Singapore or Blue SG in Singapore, I think it's going to be a lot more. Let me know in the comment section below. Shopping, as I mentioned also previously, mid month, I didn't bring certain things that I needed to bring to South Korea. So I bought things like contact lens solution, shampoo, body soap, of which I cannot bring because I only have a limited luggage size and weight. I brought the wrong contact lens box over. So I had some mishap. If I take out my contact lens and my specs, I'm blind as a bat. I can't see anything. So I had to buy it. And over here in South Korea, actually, to my surprise, it was cheaper as compared to buying in Malaysia. So in Singapore, I would usually ship in from Malaysia. I used Biofinity. That was $60 for one box. But when I bought it here on Jeju Island, it's $40. And I went to another shop to compare the price. It was slightly under $40. So if you're coming to South Korea, order your contact lens here, bring it back to Singapore and use it. That's a tip. So that was what I spent on and for shopping this month is at $144.67. I bought jeans as well that amounted to roughly about $50 over dollars. For gifts, it was $51.49 because I had a car. I decided to go to this place called London Bagel Museum where they sell really good bagels and it's a very popular spot. Some people do queue up to five hours for it. I went early in the morning, bought some bagels and gave it out to my host and also the neighbor that was beside me. And for entertainment is when I went to go and watch a movie here on Jeju Island. So in the month of September, I spent a total of $813.23. I think this is pretty reasonable considering the fact that whatever that I've bought will last me until October means that I don't have to spend a lot in October as well. Maybe in the month of October, it'll be more realistic in terms of living here in South Korea, in Jeju Island, how my expenses will be like eating in, dining out, public transportation, etc, etc. So October is my birthday month. I don't think I'll be going out to venture about or anything. I had initially rented a car for that day but I felt like there isn't anything much that I wanted to do also. Living just a normal day-to-day -day life is enough for me. I haven't celebrated my birthday since about three years ago. It's just another day. I'm just gonna spend it doing work. If not, I'll just go out to a nearby restaurant to have a meal, a good meal and maybe buy a cake eat some snacks or do whatever that I want to do since it's my birthday anyway. This is the variable expenses for the month of September and let's go to the income portion that probably all of you are curious about. Let's go. The one that you guys have been waiting for in the month of September, my entire income makes up to a total of $14,076.98. Bulk of it came from YouTube, which is the main source of income coming in. Whatever that you see where I am and what I'm doing is funded through the side hustle income, YouTube, and also my savings. So I'm not taking anything from my parents. This was all planned out already. I wanted time to be able to work on the side projects of which I'm not earning anything from it just to try and experiment and see how things goes. So my main source of income previously was my full-time job of which I left in July 2023. Bond interest and dividends this month was a total of $181.67. This makes up of the Fraser Green Bond, $113.21. And September is the month where a lot of dividends came in as well. Whatever REITs that I'm holding paid out for bank interest, it was a total of $99.74. For those of you who do not know, I'm using you one savings account. I'm transferring over as salary and also spending on the Yobi ladies card in order to be able to hit the $500 minimum spend. That savings account alone will give you 5% for your first $100,000. i will put the screenshot over here. For those of you who do not know, Yobi One is the highest savings account that you can use right now. And for cashback, it's $43.34. The breakdown of it is from Yobi Absolute Amex, a unlimited cashback credit card where you can earn cashback on almost anything. I'm not using the card. My dad is using the card. So thanks dad. And that was the $36.07. You'll be Evo 1 cent based on the previous month's cashback. I didn't really spend on that card. For HSBC Revolution, I'm accumulating the points for miles, so I did not redeem anything over there. HSBC Everyday Global Savings Account, I've gotten $4.87. It's a 1% cashback for the Everyday Rewards Program on gyro payment. HSBC Advance is $2.39. HSBC Advance is a credit card that is under mentioned, or rather a good card that not many people have, but if you want the specific details of that card, I'll link the video up above and down below. But HSBC Advance is what you can look at if you have bigger things that you need to pay for and also for your hospital bill payments, etc, etc. Refer to that video up above, down below. Total cashback for the month of September is $43.34 and my entire YouTube income for the month of September is $13,752.23. Whatever that I'm doing here on YouTube, the income will fluctuate. So there are good months, there are going to be bad months and this is where managing personal finance is going to be important. For those of you who are freelancers, you know that when 
when you have good months, you should be saving up for the bad months where you don't have any clients coming in and you don't earn an income at that month. This is where it's important. If you're going to be spending whatever that you've earned and not preparing for rainy days like that, then there comes the emergency situation where you need to draw down on your savings. What I'm doing on the good months that I'm receiving more from my YouTube income, I'm stashing it aside, putting it into savings, save up whatever that I can and spend wisely. My fixed expenses for the month of September is high, mainly because of my overseas relocation rental payment that I've paid. And if you're asking whether will it be cheaper living in Singapore, yes it will be because I don't have to pay rent in Singapore. But if I needed to rent a place, living in Singapore is going to be more expensive as compared to me plucking myself out of Singapore, moving here to Jeju where my rent is only eight nine hundred dollars per month. If you think in that perspective, it is cheaper living here as compared to Singapore. But in Singapore, with most of us, we don't pay rent because it's our parents' place. In October, my variable expenses will definitely be lower because I'm not meeting anybody for now and also my groceries will not have to be bought as much as I bought in September. That is what I'm excited to be looking at as well. And my income in October is not going to be a lot. I can predict in a way, get a feel of how much I'll be earning in the month of October. It's not going to be a lot. I can't break down to you specifically what it makes up of. U-Trip makes up of $30. YouTube AdSense revenue is $799.81. BMAC and Coffee is where you can buy my budgeting spreadsheet for those of you who are interested. You don't want to create a spreadsheet for yourself to do up everything from scratch to budget. My spreadsheet is available on Coffee, of which every single year I'll do an update which you can get for free as well. For Trust Bank referral is $467.50. The rest of it I can't break down because they are affiliate link. On this channel, if you are new or you followed long enough, I only cover on things that I personally do use. There are a lot of products out there but I don't cover every single one of them. I only cover on things that I personally have incorporated into my own personal finances and use them consistently to help me manage my entire personal finances. On Safe Trade platform, I'm using them to trade in the US stock market. For Mumu's platform, I'm using them for the Singapore stock market but now they have fractional trading and Mumu's platform is one of the low-cost brokerages platform that you can go with. Great sign-up deals, details all down in the description box below. Scythe is a platform where you can also create managed portfolios if you don't know how to invest. It's a great platform to start with. They've been around long enough. All of this at the end of the day is just what I'm using, sharing it with you guys how I manage my own personal finances so that you can also hopefully find it useful and then incorporate it into your own personal finance life. There are definitely other people who have reached out, want to collaborate and run affiliate sponsorship, but I don't take them on because one, I don't know how to incorporate it into my own personal finance life. Whether is it good or not is another thing. I'm not a very well-versed individual. I only will be able to talk about certain things if I personally use them or have experience with them and that is just how I am as an individual. That is all for the YouTube income. It makes up to a total of $13,752.23. Sensitive information, I can't share exactly who does it come from. Along the way, if you have any questions with regards to whatever that I've shared or your personal finance questions, you can always head over to Instagram, DM me over there. If not, leave it down in the comment section below. I reply and read every single one of the comments as well. This is the Money Diary series of how it has been one month in Jeju Island and in October it will be more realistic one where I don't have to buy anything out of the ordinary how it will be like so if you are interested in that subscribe follow along on this journey and this is September's Money Diaries I'll see you in my next video have a great week ahead bye bye